their problems today and does it really address any of their necessities or requirements? And the honest answer was no, not for all of them. So there were really categories and categories of SMEs and clearly there was one set of SMEs for whom this was like a logical two steps away. But for many others, uh, there were challenges about day-to-day -day financing, there were challenges about scale, there were challenges about uh, you know, managing their finances, there were challenges about management bandwidth, and there were so many other things that they were really grappling with. And so it was quite clear that what solution the SME platform will come out with will address one set of uh, SMEs. Uh, so, you know, who could these potentially be? Again, you know, a lot of engagement with the community gave us a few insights. Clearly, companies that were looking to build scale, looking to expand capital, or had investors in them already and therefore wanted some kind of an exit for them. These were eminently companies that would look at an emerge platform. And then there was this interesting next set of companies where there was really a conflict or a challenge, uh, typically from growing out of a family-owned situation to a more broad-based, a professionally managed, uh, you know, broad-based stakeholder situation. And these set of companies were very well-performing companies too, but had not yet taken that leap to move from here and say, no, we, we want to build scale, we want to raise capital, and we are sort of mentally clear that, you know, we have to broad-base our management, etc., etc. So, there were several of them with whom there was obviously work to be done. And then there were several others for whom, as I said, there were really many other challenges and I'm not sure the Emerge platform would address any of those. For example, challenges around bank financing or challenges around talent retention, challenges around contracts. So, several of these SME issues, uh, I'm afraid the Emerge platform doesn't really give an answer to, but it does give an answer to the companies in the two strata that I just outlined to you. The engagement, again, with these companies clearly pointed to a few things. That it was not easy for them to raise capital. The costs around raising capital were humongous for the kind of ticket sizes that we were talking about. And three, it was also expensive because the number of people they had to engage with, there was not a ready-made invest, uh, investor community to whom they could talk to. So which meant several trials before they could hit with right investors. So even if we just took these three C's, capital, cost, and credibility, it looked like it would be a huge value proposition to the SME companies for achieving their financing needs. Let's take the cost issue first. So when we put this platform together, one of our key goals was how do we reduce the cost of raising funds for the SME? How do we ensure that when someone is trying to raise 25 crores from the market, he doesn't spend 5 crores to raise 25 crores. Right? It's completely inefficient, suboptimal, and he's not going to do it. He or she's not going to do it. So the key costs in this you know, 18, 20% cost of raising capital, when we got down to, we figured out that a lot of that really was around marketing costs. And a lot of it was actually risk costs bundled into due diligence. There's actually a lot of risk premium that merchant bankers and others were bundling into the due diligence cost, which is what made it such a fat piece. So one of our, 
one of our, uh, may I say, uh, ways to mitigate this was to see whether we could we could take on ourselves some of the due diligence overheads that SMEs are invariably uh, forced to forced to sort of cough up. Second, we also felt that if we take some of these due diligence costs on ourselves, it could also help build the credibility for the investor who is looking at these scripts. Because it would pretty much amount to a third party kind of a due diligence. And so it would add to the credibility of the investment for the third party investor and thereby make it more attractive for a lot more investors than uh, the ones who raise their hands today. So a few of the initiatives or a few of the things that we sort of brought into this framework were around uh, helping with third party due diligence from the exchange. You know, in terms of, for example, when an SME who raises its hand and says, you know, we want to look at a public issue in a few uh, months from now, uh, we brought in a couple of accounting firms helping that SME to sort of recast, look at the financial statements in a way in which it makes sense for the investor to cast it in standard formats in the way in which it would work for them. The second. Uh, uh, the second initiative we took was around a uh, IPO grading. Uh, earlier, when we talked of IPO grading, I remember that in the main board, very often people felt that, oh, this is not going to help, this is not going to help market the issue. But in the case of the SME, actually it was counterintuitive, it really helped the issue for the simple reason that the IPO grading gave a lot more visibility and sunlight into that asset being a good asset and helped the company market itself better to an investor who didn't know enough about the company. So today for the first few issuances on the Emerge platform, uh, the exchange itself has tied up with Crystal to sort of come out with a voluntary grading of these issues. The other upside of an IPO grading process of this variety we found was that many of the large investors, like your banks, especially the banks and institutions, uh, have a huge degree of comfort when there is an IPO grading. And the hoops that an issue has to pass through in the decision making process in these institutions becomes much faster and easier when there is a transparent IPO grading attached to a issue. So again, without adding to the cost for the issuer, when the exchange takes it up upon itself, it's a win-win because on one hand it improves the credibility and on the other hand it keeps the costs low for the issuer. And fourthly, uh, this is an interesting, uh, this is a very interesting insight that today, even if you keep the SME aside for the time being, on the main board, uh, NSC has about 1,500 companies. But if you look at it, institutional investors would be in less than 400, 450 companies. And the reason for that usually will be that unless a company is tracked by a researcher or there is an analyst tracking a company, institutional investors do not put the resources to do it on their own and track it quarter on quarter for the next three, five years. So automatically the number of assets in which institutional investors get interested becomes a very small number. So as an exercise, even before SME started, NSC took up the uh, took up an uh, you know an experiment to do a research report quarter on quarter on all the thousand five hundred companies that were there on the main board. Nobody obviously would be interested in the top two hundred companies because there is enough and more research coverage on the top two hundred companies. But there was tremendous uptake and good feedback. For example, on the last two hundred companies. In fact. 
uh, on many of the smaller companies, which were very good track record companies, the research report actually helped in bringing in investor interest. We saw more liquidity, more interest in those companies after the research reports were being put out in public domain. Now, this is what really encouraged us to believe that doing research reports on the Emerge platform, on the SME companies on the Emerge platform, will really go a long way in getting the institutional investors committed to these companies. So, that's the other thing that the exchange will go about doing, which is to track these companies and put out the financials uh, in the form of research reports, what run, what run, or uh, for time till they mature and get on, let's say, in the main form. Now, clearly, this is not an exhaustive list, but what I'm really sharing with you here is that it's obvious to us that Emerge requires an ecosystem to be created around it. And the exchange sees itself as a catalyst in putting that ecosystem together. In the SME platform, our aspiration is not to come back and say in three years we listed 1,000 companies. No, that's not our goal or our aspiration. I think if we are able to build a credible platform which manages to bring the stars of tomorrow. And why do I say that? It has to be an aspirational platform which helps companies grow, which partners companies in their growth and helps them reach the kind of scale and globalization that they can potentially achieve. People often ask me, so is your Emerge platform like the AIM? Is your Emerge platform like the uh, JASDAQ and the COSDAQ? And my answer to that is no. The Emerge platform is like the NASDAQ. And the Emerge platform will have the stars of tomorrow pretty much like NASDAQ identified the growth companies 20, 30 years ago, which have all become tremendous corporations today which have contributed to the economy, to productivity and so on. And that's really the role that we see Emerge play. So we want to work with companies to help realize their aspirations in this process. And we want to create that ecosystem which will help them grow faster, which will help them surmount these challenges. Uh, a little easier and a little faster. And that, I think, really is what we would count as the success of this platform. So, with these words, uh, let me close my remarks and be happy to have question answers with all of you. Thank you, Chitra. Uh, I think I'm going to the very first question uh, of myself. And, uh, uh, a, uh, Chitra, when you mentioned NASDAQ, and, and at the same time, you also mentioned uh, having your uh, working with an ecosystem in India. And, and third, if you put another subset there, is the investor appetite in India, especially in public markets. Uh, there are three things that emerge. One, the investor interest in public markets, be it emerge platform or be it uh, ESC and SE, is largely driven large cap issues. In, uh, just because of the degree of comfort. Second, investors typically have been suspicious of smaller businesses and deployment of capital in smaller businesses. Third, for an exchange like NSE, where you are dealing with relatively large cap issues as your predominant bread and butter, working with an ecosystem which is different, which gives you lesser fees, which gives you lesser money, which gives you more work. Uh, how are the, all of them linked in your mind? What's your experience has been in the last whatever few listings that you've had? Great question. Uh, let me start with the last first. Uh, 
I think NSC has always defined its objective uh, not in terms of merely top line growth. We have always been pioneers in new products and new market segments. I can share with you that there are products which are 16 years since their launch, but because they have not achieved the kind of depth and because our customers don't make so much money out of those products, I still don't charge a rupee on any of those. The reason I say that is that if we are committed to a particular product segment and a market segment, we have to stay the course, we will stay the course till the market realizes its full potential. As far as SME is concerned, we have a huge commitment and a conviction to this segment. Let me, let me flip this question to a different, uh, you know, in a different way. It's very easy for NSC to go out and list a few hundred companies in this capital range, right? And we would probably even make some listing fees out of all of them. We have stayed away from doing this for a year, not because there are not enough companies, but because the reason why those companies want that listing is very different from what we want to achieve through the SME listing, through what the Emerge platform should be providing in the form of, you know, a platform for aspirational enterprise. So, gratefully, there are enough venues for people to list, so it's really okay if we don't focus on that sector. Which is why, when I started, I said, we are focused on the real sector. We are focused on the real sector, we are focused on enterprise, which has created ground level value already, which has global aspirations, which has scale aspirations, which has you know, backward integration, forward integration, aspirations, in terms of making its impact, its size more reckonable. So how many companies have gone through this so far? So, um, so just, to, just to complete where I set out here. So we are very clear that we will go along the kind of niche segment that we are talking about. Let me also say, that you, know, you raised a very fair point that the markets are so bad. Who is going to sort of, how difficult is it going to be to market these issues? I completely agree with you. I will give you the experience of the last four to five months uh, and then also answer your question, how many companies? There are exactly five companies with whom we are working right now. In a general way, the appetite is not there. When an IPO comes to the market, the appetite is not there. But, in all these five companies so far, for companies number one and two, in fact, we are very close to closing the issue. It's a very unusual situation for me as an exchange to be talking to you about closing an issue because I'm not a merchant banker. Right? But that must tell you something about the role that the exchange is playing in this entire effort. You know, as I have been telling our team, we are chief cook and bottle washer for the entire uh, process here. So, we help the companies get ready, the due diligence, the rating. We tie the companies up with potential merchant bankers. We help with the merchant bankers to go and talk to institutional investors. We hold road shows for that company in the exchange premises with a lot of my leading brokers. That's how we help tie up the issue. We've again taken a conscious call that we will not go unsyndicated or untied up on an issue and just launch it in the market. We will help syndicate that issue at least to 75-80% before it is launched into the market. Now, in all of this, while in general terms there is no appetite, believe me, 
where the asset is good, there is appetite. We have had little difficulty in our road shows when the promoters have come, made the pitch to my broker community, the wealth management clients, the HNI clients, apart from the institutional investors, for good assets, people are willing to invest. In fact, it's a very strange situation because the complete lack of opportunity in the main market is making people look for opportunities in other segments. Now, if there was a crowding out, if there was, you know, three, five thousand crore issues coming, believe me, nobody will turn around and look at other assets. So, actually, it is an opportunity because there's really nothing out there available. People are willing to make the effort to go and search for good assets which they can distribute. This is our experience so far. Our first listing is not yet done. Our first issue should be off the block, hopefully within the next three to four weeks. The second issue thereafter. I think at the end of March of this year, if we have 10 solid issues, we would be very happy. So, it's not really a numbers game, but those 10 issues should say something for what the emerging platform will be. So another question though, typically when 